Okay, so the directions got cropped out of this one, but let me just tell you what it is. It says um, to solve the inequality and express a solution um, using inequality or interval notation or graph a solution set on a real number line. So try it out, give it a shot, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so this is a really scary looking problem, but what I'm going to first do, I'll leave five alone, I'm going to kind of just isolate this thing right here. Now this calls for factoring by grouping. So we have x to the third minus x squared minus 4x plus 4. How do I know that I want to factor it by grouping? Well, I know that because I have x to the third power, x to the second power, x to the first, and then the last term has no x term to factor out. So I'm not going to try to factor anything out to begin with, right? Um, and with the third power, I'm not sure how to factor it simply. So my only other option is to factor by grouping. And I can't use the quadratic formula because it's to the third power. So the way I factor by grouping is I look at the pairs of terms and see if there's anything in common I can factor out. It's not always easy to see, but I always start with the second pair. In this case, I've got if I factor out an x and a 1, I know that I can redistribute a 4 and make this work. And the tricky part here is to realize, I think, that you want to factor out a negative 4 because this is negative 4x and plus 4. So you're really factoring out an x minus 1. If you're trying to factor out an x plus 1, it won't work as nicely here because we have a minus sign. You could try it and see what happens. So if you, if you try one sign and it doesn't work, like x plus 1, uh, switch it over, try the negative. And then I start by writing my second pair, assuming I could use that common factor. And I think, well, what would I then factor out of that? Well, it'll have to be x squared because x squared times x is x cubed, and x squared times 1 is x squared, so it works, right? And then this becomes, well, it becomes, I'll write it below actually, sorry, uh, x squared minus 4 times x minus 1. x minus 1 is that common factor. Now x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares, so I'm going to factor it as x minus 2 times x plus 2. And what I've now done is I've found... Uh, these important x values that would cause this thing to equal zero, this this whole expression, right? And they, they're matching this. So I rewrote this scary looking expression into these binomials right here. So I know if x is two, or x is negative two, or, x, and x can't equal one, right? If x is equal to one, I'll say, you get an undefined result. If it's negative 2, you get an undefined result. And if it's positive 2, you get an undefined result because you cannot divide by 0. So now we represent this on a number line. I'm going to estimate where these are. And we've got uh, 2, negative 2, and 1. So let's say negative 2 is here. It can't equal negative 2. Let's say then here's negative 1, here's 0, here's positive 1, and 2. Okay. A little bit sloppy, sorry about that. So now we test out x values around that. Let's say I pick in this interval right here, the easiest x value I can think to test between uh, 1 and negative 2 is 0. And if I plug in 0, I get a positive result because 0 minus 0 minus 0 plus 4 is 4, and 5 divided by 4 is a positive number, right? If I plug in a number between, let's say greater than 2, let's say uh, 4 or something, I'm also going to get a positive result because 64 minus 16 uh, is 48 minus another 4 times 4 minus 16 is 32 plus 4 is 36 and 5 36 is also positive. We want x values that get us less than 0. And then if I plug in um, a number between 1 and 2, try it, you can plug in uh, 1 and a half, let's say, this whole expression would be uh, less than 0. And if you plug in a number smaller than negative 2, like negative 4, you also get a negative result. So here, I can set up my number line example quickly by doing this. Any number less than negative 2 in between 1 and 2 will give me an output less than 0. Or I could say an interval notation from negative 2 to negative infinity or from 1 to 2. Right? So Anything between negative 2 and negative infinity and 1 and 2 will give me a negative result. Or I can write x such that x is less than, not less than or equal to, but less than negative 2. 
or x is or this is true x is between 1 and 2 so any x value within those intervals will give you a negative output all right hope this helps